Greetings to everyone who is watching. This is Mahika Ganguly, a student of the Department of Dairy Sciences and Food Technology, which comes under the Institute of Agricultural Sciences, Banaras Hindu University. This video is about a group project assigned to us by our professor, Dr. R. K. Dwari Sir. The topic of this assignment is post-harvest processing of coconut and its byproducts. The group members are Payal Kumari, Sneha Yadav, Sunny Kumar, and Mahika Ganguly. To begin with, we shall first see the contents of this assignment. The table of content comprises of introduction, coconut's taxonomy, its anatomy, its production, health benefits, conditions required for growth, harvesting of coconut, post-harvest processing, types of byproducts and uses, which is followed by conclusion, acknowledgement and references. The first slide is about introduction. Coconut tree is a member of the palm tree and the only living species of the genus Cocos. The word coco in the word coconut means head or skull. It is almost known that all of the parts of a freshly grown coconut are edible and those parts which are not, they can be used as byproducts. The coconut provides a variety of products which are consumed in the region of our country and internationally as well. The next slide is about its taxonomy. Taxonomy deals with the classification of a particular species on the basis of kingdom, family, order, genus and species. As coconut is a fruit which is a plant, it comes under the kingdom plantae, family Araceaceae, order Aracles, genus Cocos, species Cocos nucifera. It is to be noted that the Latin name or botanical name of coconut is Cocos nucifera. The anatomy of coconut consists of a fibrous husk, which is the mesocarp. This mesocarp provides protection to the inner contents of the coconut. The inner contents of the coconut comprise of endosperm, which is also known as coconut meat. This coconut meat is the white edible portion of the coconut. This coconut meat is also the home to the coconut apple, which is a sweet spongy mass, which dissolves and absorbs in the endosperm when it is ripe. The nutritional prof profile of coconut can be classified as vitamins, calories and minerals. Coconut contains almost all the vitamins of the vitamin B complex leaving vitamin 7 and vitamin B12. Minerals like manganese and selenium which are very rarely found in fruits can be found in coconut. The protein content of coconut is around 3.33 grams. Coconut also contains rich amount of fats, which is to be noted as 33.49 grams. The health benefits of coconut can be listed as It is very nutritious and rich in fiber, which helps in preventing digestive disorders as it regulates the bowel movement. A study has been demonstrated that dietary fiber also protects against the chances of strokes and heart conditions. Coconut Production India is ranked as the first producer of coconut in the world. It is known that in India, the southern states of our country are the largest producers of coconut. Why? Because the geographical conditions required for the growth of coconut can be fulfilled in those southern states. The following slide shows a chart about the highest coconut producing states in India which were marked in 2022. It can be seen that Karnataka had a market share of 30.83% of coconut production. The conditions required for the growth of coconut are Coconut palm thrives on sandy soils and is highly tolerant of salinity. It needs higher humidity around 70 to 80% for optimum growth. It prefers area with abundant sunlight and regular rainfall. The adjacent picture shows the life cycle of the coconut that is how it is germinated and planted and then converts into a fruit. The conditions required for growth without any care are a mean daily average temperature of 12 to 13 degrees Celsius, rainfall of about 39 inches. 
the harvesting of coconut is usually done about 12 to 13 months after the opening of the inflorescence the fully mature coconut has got 30 to 40% coir and the coconut water in the fully mature nut contains about 94.5% of water and the rest configuration deals with the content of vitamin c b sugar and fiber methods of harvesting there are many methods of harvesting and it varies from different countries however two common methods can be seen which are pole methods and climbing methods the first one that is the pole method in this method the harvested nut is usually taken from the tree with the help of a harvesting stichet which is attached to the end of a long bamboo pole the advantage is that the using bamboo pole it is generally faster more efficient less tedious and less dangerous when compared with climbing climbing methods basically climbing methods are of two types which can be done by using either a mechanical device or with the help of a rope in climbing a person is climbs the tree and then harvest harvests the coconut with the help of a harvesting knife and cuts the rip of the nuts the advantage is that the climbing climber or harvester could clean the insect of the crown of the palm for pest or disease attack which prevents the spoilage of the coconut this is a palm climbing device here we can see that a mechanical device is used for climbing the coconut palm this is climbing the coconut palm with the help of a rope this climbing the help with the help, with the help of a rope can be dangerous as it can have chances of fallage the next comes post harvest handling after harvesting the coconut has to be handled properly to prevent its shelf life and deterioration usually fully matured nuts are harvested the various steps involved in the post harvest handling are be husking which is followed by nut splitting then copra processing and last drying we shall see them in detail the first step that is de husking it is usually done either by manually or mechanically in manual de husking scissors with sharp end are used which are used to de husk the coconut manually it is to be noted that here the time taken to de husk the coconut is very it is to be noted that the time taken here to dehusk the coconut is larger and more energy is required then comes mechanical dehusking this is aided with the help of mechanical dehuskers which have got sensors it is efficient faster and requires less labor then splitting of coconut the splitting of coconut is done with the help of a coconut machet the coconut meat is still attached to the hard shell even after splitting usually the coconut water is drained off leaving the cups with ready for drying then we come for copra processing copra is produced after drying the coconut kernel it is to be noted that if not dried properly a mold called as aspergillus flavus can grow on the co- copra which can cause spoilage thus rendering it not suitable for human consumption here the reduction of moisture content can be seen drastic change of moisture content from 50% to 6% is observed then aflatoxin free copra can be produced it is to be noted that aflatoxin is an anti nutritional factor which limits the activity of certain nutrients in human body so it has to be removed for its effective and proper absorption the following guidelines are using mold inhibitors during rain regular copra should not be limited with foul nuts regular sun drying for 48 to 60 hours to reduce the moisture content to 6% if the drying is done mechanically it is to be noted that for the first 16 hours the temperature of the dryer should be maintained between 35 to 50 degree celsius followed by 50 degree celsius till 6% moisture content is reached then we have got drying of copra usually drying of copra is done by three steps which is solar drying k 
स्किल ड्राइंग एंड हॉट एयर ड्राइंग वी शेल सी दम इन डिटेल सन ड्राइंग हेयर इन सन ड्राइंग द कोपरा और द स्प्लिटेड नट इज ड्राइड यूजिंग द सोलर पार दिस इज यूजली प्रैक्टिस इन ड्राई सीजन और समर सीजन इट इज अ चीपर मेथड एंड नो एक्सपेंसिस फॉर फ्यूल आर रिक्वायर्ड दिस इज अ सेटअप फॉर द ड्राइंग यूजिंग सोलर एनर्जी then kiln drying it is also known as it is also known as smoke drying usually two types of dryers are used direct smoke copra dryer and semi direct smoke copra dryer the difference between these two are that in direct smoke copra dryer the copra is directly kept in contact with the furnace however in semi direct smoke copra dryer there is a distance between the furnace and the drying bed the smoke copra dryer it lacks a chimney and it has to be attended in when it is in operation to prevent from burning due to the pit underneath this figure shows a dry smoke copra dryer then we have got semi direct smoke copra dryer here the dryer has a combustion pit located about 3 feet away from the drying bed and the drying hours usually vary from 20 to 25 hours and the resultant moisture content is about 6% then we have got hot air dryers the hot air dryers produce copra and this copra is the most uncontaminated one as there is no contact between the smoke and the kernel the common designs used in the industry are modified kukum hot air dryer and brick hot air dryer The modified Kukum hot air dryer it basically consists of three standard oil drums welded together with five semicircular baffles. A furnace of length three feet and width two feet is provided. The furnace has got a slanting grid and door, and a valve which regulates the temperature inside the furnace. About thirty hours are needed to dry up to one batch to the desirable moisture content that is to six percent. Then next comes the Coco Pugan hot air brick copra dryer. The difference between these two are that in the previous one, the drying chamber was made up of metal. However, here instead of metal, we use bricks, and the proportions of the bricks used are 260 centimeter in width, 360 centimeter in length, 200 centimeter in height, and this setup needs to be preheated for about 3.5 hours. and the temperature after preheating should be around 66.3 degree celsius inside the chamber these are the figures of modified kukum dryer and coco pigeon hot air dryer then we have got the types of by products this is a flow chart which gives an idea about the types of the by products obtained from coconut we shall see them in detail the classification of the by products can be done on four bases which are kernel based shell based coconut water based and coconut inflorescence based we shall see some of the by products line by line the first by product is coconut virgin oil the coconut virgin oil is coconut oil which is obtained from coconut milk it has got low content of free fatty acid and thus has got a longer shelf life then the next by product is desiccated coconut coconut The desiccated coconut is dehydrated coconut meat which is grated and shredded. It is available in different grades based on the fineness of the coconut grade obtained. And then comes the coconut milk. It the coconut milk is usually used in the preparation of curries, sweets, ice creams. Each of us must have heard about coconut ice creams. The base ingredient of coconut ice cream here is coconut milk. Then the next is coconut oil since coconut contains a higher amount of fats that fat can be used as oil in cooking because of its stable character coconut oil has got a preferable chances for fat for deep frying because of its high content of lauric acid and omega 6 it has gained an importance as a dietary fat Then we have got coconut shell powder. This is used in the manufacture of furniture. The coconut shells, which are made free from the contamination of coir pith, they are broken into small pieces and fed into a pulverizer. Then the powder obtained is sieved into various sizes with the help of meshes. 
the next product is coconut shell charcoal the shell charcoal is obtained by burning the shell of a fully matured coconut with limited supply of air so that they do not burn away to ash but are only carbonized the next comes activated carbon the production of activated carbon is carried out in two steps the first step deals with conversion of the shell charcoal by carbonization process which is carried out in out in mud pits in the second step the coconut shell charcoal is activated by a reaction with steam at a temperature of 900 degrees celsius to 111 degrees celsius under controlled atmosphere in rotary crane the temperature factor here is very important and has to be kept in mind then tender coconut water or tcw is another by product it is a sterile nutritious thirst quenching drink in this the sugar content steadily increases from 1.5 to 5% in the early stages of maturation and then slowly falls to 2% after the full maturity of the nut then coconut vinegar is another by product the coconut vinegar is made from the sap of the coconut tree and it is rich in minerals vitamins and beta carotene which is a precursor of vitamin a calcium iron magnesium phosphorus and sodium since it is obtained from a natural source it can be considered as an healthier alternative to synthetic vinegar the next is nata de coco which is a fermented coconut product which is obtained by the fermentative activity of acetobacter acetate this acetobacter acetate is made to act on the surface of the sugar enriched coconut water This nata plays a important role in the development of coconut industry because of the growing interest in its production from coconut water and abundant base production from the coconut processing units. Then we have got nira. The nira is a vascular sap which is collected from the immature unopened coconut inflorescence. It is used as biopreservatives and can be pasteurized. Coconut jaggery When fresh nira is boiled to 118 to 120 degrees Celsius and allowed to solidify it forms coconut jaggery which is also known as gourd it is a rich source of calcium and phosphorus which are important minerals for the growth of a human body then we have got coconut palm sugar the coconut palm sugar is nothing but the coconut palm syrup which is crystallized to form fine granules of sugar it can be used as an alternative sugar Then we have got coconut flour syrup. Coconut flour syrup is an inflorescence based coconut by product. This product is similar to jaggery with high content of minerals. The syrup has got 50% of sucrose content and possesses low GI at the levels of 35 GI which indicates that low levels of sugar get absorbed into the blood. Hence it can be quite beneficial for the diabetic patients. The conclusion of this entire PPT can be summed up by saying that post harvest processing of coconut helps to prevent the coconut for a longer period of time and also creates a wider variety of products that can be used in food and other applications. Overall, post harvest processing maximizes the value of coconuts thereby creating a wealth of products with diverse application. Last but not the least, we would like to acknowledge our professor Dr. R. K. Duari sir for his guidance and support throughout the project. we would be also like to extend our gratitude to our team members for their constant hard work and dedication without which this assignment wouldn't have been completed on the time furthermore we are also thankful to the assistance received from the various journals and websites and we will be always grateful for the almighty to giving us the chance to get knowledge and experience from this project the references can be given as such Thank you that's all for this assignment